Hello and welcome to Jill Cameron Creations. Thanks for joining me today. Don't forget to hit subscribe so you don't miss a single thing. We're going to do something a little different today and we're just going to have an instructional video. We're not making any cards. We're just going to walk through five easy ink blended backgrounds. Let's talk about ink blending. Ink blending is a very common technique used in card making. It depends heavily on your card stock and the ink that you use, whether or not you get good results. So I have a couple different kinds of card stock and I have a couple different ink setting off to the side over here. And we're going to go over each one. First, card stock matters. So I have some inexpensive card stock that we're going to do some testing on. I have some super smooth card stock here, and this is actually Stampin' Up's Whisper White or Basic White card stock. And this card stock is formulated to work with their brand of inks. And then we have some Nina Solar White card stock that I pretty much use for everything. So we'll take a look at that. Some of the inks that we're going to be testing out today, I have scrapbook.coms. This is midnight blue. I'm going to use blue for everything because it's a dark color and you can blend it down to a lighter color. So we're going to stick with a dark color so you can really see it. This is a hybrid ink. Uh, so you would be able to use this with um, Copic markers and that kind of thing. So this is a hybrid ink. Then we're going to test out a Distress Oxide ink because this is more like a pigment ink and I don't have a lot of pigment inks at all. I have like a white pigment ink, but this is the closest thing to a pigment ink I have since it's that combination of the two. And this is gonna give you more coverage and it's gonna give you that more velvety coverage as well. Then I have an actual just plain old dye ink, which is an all to new crisp ink. And this is gonna be in Desert Night. And then I have a Stampin' Up! Ink Night of Navy. We're going to be using two different ink blending tools. I have a domed ink applicator and I also have an ink blending brush. Now I have um, used the flat blenders for years because that's pretty much the only thing that we had and they will leave the round edge marks on your paper very easily. So I switched over everything to these domed blenders and right now Ranger and Scrapbook.com, these are Scrapbook.coms, uh, make these and I absolutely love these. I, I, there's several different ways that you can buy these as well. You can get them with the little itty bitty teeny tiny ones that look like um, the finger blenders. You can get them where they are a little bit rounder that look more like a hockey puck kind of that you hold on to. These come in several different sizes, smaller, larger, that kind of thing. These are Stampin' Up's version of them, which are, they're pretty much the same through all the companies. Uh, some of them have rainbow handles. Uh, some of them have a little bit smaller heads on them. Some of them have a little bit bigger. So it just depends on what your aesthetic is in your craft room more than anything. But the bristles are, they were adapted from makeup brushes. I actually have a great big one that's a makeup brush and uh, I can't I still use this to cover big areas and get really 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 subtle blends uh, this works really well the bigger the sponge and the softer the bristles on the end I get really really subtle blends with this so I will pull this out every once in a while to get a really subtle blend on the edge of cardstock or something so I have several different tools that I use to get um, for blending on my cardstock. So what we're going to do real quick is I'm going to test all of these different inks and just stripes down all these different papers and I'll label it on screen so you can see which one it is. We're going to start with the cheap cardstock first and I say cheap and I mean this is cheap cardstock and I want to show you how the difference in all of this couple different things to note about ink blending. All inks are going to dry differently. They're going to, some of them are going to tone down. Some of them are going to even out. Some of them are going to um, stay exactly like they are. It just depends on the ink. And it also depends on the paper that you use. So keep that in mind as you're ink blending. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. going to do some demonstration here real quick. I wanted you to see 
the difference in a couple different inks on a couple different kinds of cardstock. So we're going with the El Cheapo first. This is literally a cardstock that is like the pen and something from Walmart. And this is the kind of cardstock that I use. It is an 80, I think it's a 65 pound cardstock. This is what I use to make demo cards with. Like if I need to come up with an idea and I just need to die cut something really quick and see if my idea is going to work, that kind of thing. I'm putting a card idea together um, in my head and I want to make sure that my idea in my head works. That's what I use this for. Scratch out what I'm, what I'm working on. I don't actually use it to make cards with. For ink blending, it's not going to be smooth. It's not going to be pretty. Ink just doesn't blend well on it. And you'll see at the end, you're going to see more marks on it. Stampin' Up! is one of the most popular brands of cardstock out there, and Stampin' Up! products are. I'm an admin on a really large card makers group, the Card Makers Craft Room over on Facebook um, with Nikki. And Stampin' Up! is always one of the most popular brands when you talk about what's your favorite stamping company and that kind of thing. So I had to include Stampin' Up!'s Whisper White Basic White in here along with their inks because it is one of the most popular brands out there. So I wanted to see, wanted you to see how that uh, cardstock along with several inks on that cardstock and how it performs. And then Nina Solar White is probably one of the most popular other cardstocks that's out there in, in use that is just a general everyday really good cardstock to use. It comes in two different varieties of the 80 pound and 100 pound cardstock. Now, a couple things to note as you are ink blending. The more you use an ink blending tool, especially like a sponge, the better your results are going to be. Uh, for brushes, the ink generally doesn't like stay in those. It stains the bristles of the brush, but the ink doesn't set in them like it does with a sponge. So uh, the more you use it, it doesn't build up that ink like a sponge does. That, that's prob probably the main difference that I have seen in those. You're going to get, um, it is a different look with both of those blending tools, and it it's going to depend on your the, the look that you're going for there. So here's the results. I did let these set for a couple of hours because, well, I had other things to do when I got done with it. Uh, so this is the cheap card stock. You can see the marks of the tool, especially on that hybrid ink over there on the far right. The rest of it kind of looks okay, but it doesn't feather out and smooth out as much as the other card stocks do. Now, some of that can be the ink as well. Hybrid inks don't smooth out as much as other inks do. Uh, that's just the, the nature of that particular ink. You can see these inks, it's not the camera, the, these inks smooth out a whole lot more on the Stampin' Up! Basic White uh, Whisper White cardstock because that cardstock is made to do that. Then we have the Nina Solar White cardstock. This ink smooths out on that as well, and it is absolutely gorgeous. It gives that more feathery look, but still is a little bit more defined than the Whisper White. Now we're going to go into some techniques here. For our first technique, we are going to do a dark top faded into a light. So we're going to do kind of like that ombre effect, fade, however you want to call that. And I'm doing purple on white, so we're going to start at the top. I use a post-it note. You can use a piece of paper or whatever. I just don't want my inky fingerprints or the oils from my fingers to be on my cardstock and end up imprinted on my paper. If you have sweaty fingers or anything like that and you put it on your cardstock and then you ink blend over it, your fingerprints can show up. Not all the time. It, it honestly depends on the ink. It depends on the paper and it depends on how sweaty your fingers are. But sometimes you'll have fingerprints on your paper and you don't want that. So I like to put a barrier down between my fingers and my paper just so I don't run the risk of doing that. When you want to do a fade like this from top to bottom, you're going to start at the top and just work your way down. You can work from side to side. You can work from top to bottom however you want to. And just literally keep working it until you're happy with the results. And that's all you have to do. 
really beautiful background for this and you can do it at an angle you can do it straight across you can do it however you want to you can leave it a little jagged at the bottom however you want to but this is a super simple ink blended background and if you want to you can do this in a couple different colors you could take this and do purple at the very very top and fade that down and then add a darker color at the very top to give it a little bit more depth but i just wanted a single color very simple ink blended background here because it's really beautiful to be able to do this and honestly it does take a little bit of practice to get that fade in uh, different tools are going to require a little bit different pressure here and i'm still getting used to using these brushes uh, to get the to get the different pressure right for all of them uh, it is a lot easier on your wrist to use these brushes i have found so there's the fade for this and that dries back just a little bit, not too much. Then for our next one, I'm gonna do a highlighted center. So I'm gonna ink all the way around the edge of my paper here, and I'm going to blend it out towards the center of it. This is a beautiful way to have a sentiment on a card and highlight that sentiment and just have something really simple and a five minute card this is these are what I call five minute cards for me because it doesn't take very long to do this except for one of them when I do a, a, one in a few minutes it takes a little bit longer but not too much so literally you're just going to ink blend from the outside edge in and then you're going to blend a little bit further in just to soften that edge on the inside of it and that's it that's all of it that's it so you have this beautiful colored halo on the outside edge of your card and of course it can be any color that you want it to be and that beautiful white on the inside you can also use this trick on colored card stock and i'm going to show you that at the end for a really quick trick on adding ink blending to colored card stock so there's that now we're going to do the center highlight so we're going to do ink blending on the center. I'm doing this with a domed blending because I do not have this technique down with the um, bristle brushes yet. I just don't have them down, have this down yet. So you're going to start off with more pressure in the center and then you're going to lighten your pressure as you go out in a circle. And that is, you're going to feather it as you go out. I just don't have this technique down yet on that. So I'm still using my domed blenders to do this particular technique. And I might always do it with that. And I am using Distress Oxide for this, this particular technique because I like this color. <laughs> now I'm going to switch over to some Hero Arts inks. These are dye inks. These are absolutely gorgeous inks. And I just wanted you to see another op option. I'm using Nina Solar White Cardstock for all of these panels. This is going to be a totally ink blended panel. And if you want to do ink blends from one color to the next, what you're going to do is divide your panel up into however many colors that you have. You don't need to mark it or anything. Just mentally divide it up into however many colors that you have. And then ink blend that section. You're going to ink blend it down just slightly further than where you're, you need to. But you're going to move on to your next color and overlap right there where, you're, where that light, lightest area is. You're going to need to go back and forth with your colors a little bit to get that seamless look. So now we're going to move on to our next color, which is a peachy color, and it's quite a bit of difference in the color value of it. It's much deeper color, but it's going to blend seamlessly into our orange up there because I'm going to go back and forth with it a little bit. Now here's a little trick if you're doing a solid panel and you don't really have a perfect blend on it or it's just not suiting you for some reason then flick it with water take a paper towel dab it off and then flick it with some sparkle and it will be absolutely gorgeous you won't ever pay attention to the fact that it might not be blended perfectly you'll see the texture in the background instead or here's another technique that you can do Put a stencil over top of it and blend those same exact colors in those same exact order over top of it in a stencil and then you'll have a they have that solid background in that varied color but then you're going to have that stencil over top of it as well it'd be absolutely gorgeous just a couple of different techniques that you can use to have that blended background and have it stand out in a different way so we're just going back and forth with these colors here. 
And remember, I'm not showing you any, uh, the finished cards are going to be over on the blog. So I'll have, I have pictures of the finished cards, but I'm not showing the finished cards because I really wanted to focus on these different techniques that are just simple five ways to uh, ink blend backgrounds. Super, super simple, beautiful ways to ink blend a background. And we're moving into our really bright pop of pink here, and we're going to do this the exact same way. And I'm still keeping that post-it note on here so I don't get any inky fingerprints on anything. And we're going to go back and forth in our colors here just very simply. And I wish I could ink blend as fast as this video is. But it is sped up just a little bit. This panel took about 10 minutes to ink blend total. So not too bad. Not about double the, that 5 minute card mark. So... Super simple, easy technique. You can pop a really large sentiment over this, trim this down to give it a really nice white border over it, and that's it. Absolutely gorgeous. Or you can stamp and do white heat embossing over top of it, or even black heat embossing over top of it. Be absolutely fantastic. Beautiful heat blending, uh, ink blending there. So for our last one, like I said, we're going to do a colored cardstock and we're going to color ink blend over this and you can do this with anything you, uh, with any technique that we've done so far here so like I said all the finished cards are going to be over on the blog and you can check that out don't forget to hit subscribe so you can see all of my videos and I just wanted to do something a little bit different today and give you some super simple techniques for five backgrounds for ink blending thanks for joining me y'all have a great day